everybody, I'm Kimberly Edwards from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I'm going to show you how to make Hungarian goulash, a tasty, tasty dish, my goodness. You're going to use some stewing beef or some beef crop, it was also called as well. I have, it's 300 grams, it's also about two cups of diced simmering or stewing beef, whatever your store labels it as, okay? So first things first, I'm going to use a couple vegetables. I'm going to use a little bit of scape instead of a, a garlic just because I have it and, and that's what I'm using. I have a little bit of a, a pepper that I cut out of my garden and I want to use that up. It's a red pepper and I have one diced tomato out of my garden as well. And that's pretty much all you need. You need beef and you need some special seasonings, okay? This is a simple recipe. It's going to go for about an hour after you get things going, but uh, yo, it's really worth the wait, I must say. Okay, so first things first, I have half a cup of sun sunflower oil. Don't be scared. Relax. It's going to be okay. I know it seems like a lot of oil, but it's really not a crazy, crazy amount, okay? When you see well that happens. So we're going to heat this up. I have my um, my big large soup pot back here on a medium high heat, and I'm just going to let that oil heat up a little bit quickly before I throw my beef in. So in Hungarian, this is also called Porkolt. I hope I'm saying that right. That's what hung goulash is. And it's just a stew. It's a beef stew. It's really, really hearty. It's delicious. You can serve it on rice. You can serve it on a bed of egg noodles. You can serve it just like that. You can also make it into a soup. It's very versatile. It's so delicious. I know it sounds like an old fogey recipe probably to a lot of people, an old fogey retro recipe. But goulash has it going on. That's all I have to say about that. So into my pot with my... Uh, Heated oil is going in my beef, okay? And we're gonna stir that around. Now, you can use one onion with this, and that's what a lot of the recipes call for, but I don't cook a lot with onion and garlic all the time. You know, whatever. I don't um, have onion right now in the house, and I'm going to actually use chive. I'm gonna use a little bit of chive, uh, but I'm gonna you put that in later. If I was using the hard bulb onion, I would use, put it in now and soften it up, get it translucent, and then I would put my meat in. But today, we're gonna do it a little bit differently, just because that's what you have. Now, goulash is, was a peasant's dish similar to something like a borscht is to Russia, okay? And uh, it's, you use what you have. You use tomatoes if you have it, you use peppers if you have it. Now, this um, the seasonings in this have a little bit of variety. Uh, it's a little bit different than some of the things you've been cooking with, I'm sure. We have a little dash of cumin, which is not that crazy. I'm gonna use some red peppercorns, just because I have them and they're pretty, and this is gonna be a nice red-looking dish. So there are Cambodian peppercorns. This is a fabulous paprika, from, it's Orolt paprika, and this is from Zeged, in, straight from Hungary. It's very, very authentic, it's the hot variety. And I'm also gonna use, switch it up a little bit, I'm gonna use half of that, and half of a great smoked paprika that I actually get out of Spain. And it's a smoked paprika from La Chinata, and that's what it looks like. And I'm gonna use the sweet variety tonight because everything else I'm putting in is really, really spicy. So I'm gonna use this beautiful pepper paste. It's also called Strong Steve, and I hope I'm not destroying the words. It's Eros Pista, I think that's how you say it. But it's also called Strong Steve, or nicknamed that. And then this is Piros Arani, and it's also nicknamed Red Gold. And they're both a pepper, this is a pepper paste in a tube, okay? And that's uh, just more of a, you know, a chunky pepper paste, got me? So that's what's going in here as well, in a little bit, okay? Now, I wanna brown this meat on all sides. <clears throat> This is also a recipe that you could do in your crock pot, and I'll have to show you that on another day, and I'm not mad about that because fall is coming, and we're gonna do some serious crock pot recipes. I made a really killer um, uh, recipe the other night in the crock pot, a sweet and sour pork chop with Asian vegetables. Make sure you check out that recipe. Okay, I'm gonna take it off of here so you can see it. It's just browned up. It's extremely hot, it's sizzling and stuff, but all my meat is browned, and I have a bunch of liquid at the bottom, okay? So the next thing, I'm taking it off the heat, just so that we don't have a big problem with my paprika, with our paprika. You don't wanna like burn it, scorch it, and just have it all just burn, okay? You take off the heat a little bit, it'll just cool it down a little bit more. Now, I'm gonna add the paprika. And these seasonings. I'm going to add about a half a tablespoon of this sweet smoked paprika from La Chinata. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm also going to add about a half a tablespoon of the Hungarian paprika. We're gonna keep with the theme. It comes in this really cool bag with a little ziplocky thing in there. 
about a half a tablespoon of this. This is the hot variety. Now, I'm also gonna add some of the strong steak or the arrows pista. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of this. Nice heaping teaspoon. And then I'm also going to squeeze some of this Piro Serrani or that red gold in here, about a teaspoon. We're also going to re-season at the end or some way or through the middle of it. And that's what's going to be, uh, going to balance everything out. Now I'm putting my chives in. I just, it's about a tablespoon of diced up chives. My bay leaf, my piece of scape. I just have a chunk of scape, which tastes like, a gar like garlic, okay? And my little bit of uh, pepper and one diced tomato. Now I'm gonna put it back on the heat. I'm gonna stir this up. I'm also gonna add a couple of these red peppercorns. Four or five. And a couple dashes of cumin. Now I've decided last minute to throw in some of these little cherry tomatoes that I have from my garden as well. Use what you have, guys. I'm just halving them and then I'm just gonna throw them in. Add a couple tablespoons, maybe up to a half a cup of red wine if you like. Alcohol also helps enhance flavor and it carries flavor throughout the whole dish. All right, so now I'm just gonna add water and cover up the meat. Enough to cover it and maybe just a little bit more. We're gonna put the lid on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for that to come up to a boil. We're gonna turn it down to a simmer and about every 15 or 20 minutes, we're gonna come in here and stir it and just make sure everything's happy and delicious and lovely looking in the pan. And uh, that's gonna take about another 45, 50 minutes, up to an hour if you have it. Let that beef really stew in there and let it simmer in there. That's what gets it nice and um, tender and falling apart. If you don't wait, it's cooked, but if you don't wait, it's gonna be so, so like tough to eat. It's not what you're gonna want. It's gonna be like tough goulash, doesn't, no, you don't want that. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that it stews in here long enough, the longer the better, you know, like, Whatever, take your time if you have time. Okay. Now, don't fret that this recipe has a whole bunch of crazy ingredients because they're really not that crazy. These are just more authentic. You can find other things near you, especially in your regular grocers that is going to substitute just fine. If your grocer has an ethnic food aisle, make sure you go down there and check and see what they have. They, they mess around and have this right down the aisle that you, uh, that you need this for. So check it out, this is from Univer. This is Piro Serrani and they also call it red gold. It's just, it's a hot paprika pepper paste, okay? And what you could do is you could get even roasted red peppers. If you can't find something like this in your in your ethnic food aisle or in like some kind of market, European market, Eastern European market of some kind. Um, if they don't have this, then what you could do is get some um, roasted red peppers in a jar. Every grocery store has that. Roasted red peppers in a jar and just buzz them up, okay? And you know, that's the best you can do. And the same goes with this. I mean, it's just gonna reduce down. This is the same thing as what I just told you, but it's just reduced down, like, a lot. But it's made with paprika peppers, okay? Um, the smoked paprika, some grocers are starting to carry it. If not, go to lashinata.com, or you can check it out at qualifirst.com, and they have it for, like, four bucks or something like that. This is bang for your buck. You're gonna want this on your breakfast. You're gonna want this on everything, in your bathtub water. I mean, this stuff smells good. It tastes good. It's awesome. This stuff happened to just come from, I got it from Hungary. Um, you can find hot Hungarian paprika powders in your grocer for sure. The, the paprika powders that are in your grocer sometimes are a little flat, they don't have very much taste and this is kind of what they come in this giant container and they have relatively no flavor and it's mostly just for color and it's a waste of time so don't waste your time on that. But if that's all you can get then that's all you can get. Use that. Spice it up with some hot sauce or something, or if you don't have that, or some chili pepper, or some you know cayenne pepper, or something like that, to just try and get that heat level back up for the pepper. And that's it, so don't stress, this is an awesome recipe. Um, make some rice with it, just throw it in a rice cooker or something like that. Rice or egg noodles, really, really simple. 
so tasty. You're gonna be so happy that you made this, and you're gonna be happy you have leftovers for the next day. Okay, okay everybody, the goulash is done. It's been going for just a little over an hour. I had a little extra time, and it looks gorgeous. I've already plated a little bit up, and I stirred mine around. I'm ready to eat. I wanted it to cool off a little bit so I could actually taste it for you. Um, look at this liqueur. It's like red gold. The stewing beef looks so nice. It's nice and tender. I have all this gorgeous tomatoey looking stuff in here. It's going to be nice and spicy. I can't wait. Gorgeous. Okay. Make sure you use salt and pepper, season to taste. Um, sometimes you might even want to put a tiny dash of uh, sugar in there to sweeten things up if they're a little bit too spicy or a little bit too, just the wrong way. If you Sometimes if you add just a little bit of uh, the sugar, it balances everything out just magically for you, okay? Salt and pepper, season to taste again. If you want it spicier, add some more of that hot spicy um, Eros Pista or that other little cream that I showed you, the paprika cream. You can do whatever you like. Ready? Let's see what this tastes like. And then you get a piece of beef. I know I stirred it up. It doesn't look as pretty anymore, but it looks it looks good to me because I know what it's going to taste like. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Again. I said it's kind of a granny pants kind of sounding recipe, your old aunt, aunt's goulash or something like that, but it never goes out of style, tasty food. And this is one of those classics that you really need to try in your repertoire, and this is a great recipe to try. Okay? You can experiment with it, you can add more peppers, you can add less peppers, you can add way more tomato if you want to, you can reduce the, the liqueur down to till it's much thicker, you can even add um, a little bit of a slurry into it and make it a little bit creamier. And it's, you know, make it a thicker, like, kind of a gravy in there. It's really delicious. You have to try anyway, it. Anyway, it was a very simple recipe. I just kind of, I had to do stuff at the beginning, but now I've just been coming in every, you know, 15, 20 minutes and stirring it for a little while. And taking off, taking off again and doing what I wanted to do. And it was ready in about an hour, you know. But I let it go just a little bit longer. So I had a little bit of extra time, and that's great. If you can let it go longer, the more tender your beef will be, right? But this is really tasty, and I can't wait to finish eating. Mmm. So I'm gonna wrap it up. I just served it over some Thai rice tonight. I like the consistency of it because it, you know, it's a little bit harder. My rice cooker cooked it perfectly. Make sure you check out, you know, how to cook rice in a rice cooker if you don't know how. Don't be scared. It's, we're all good. You're good, and you can cook beans in there too. Anyhow. This is a really nice recipe. It's going to feed you for a little while. You're going to be happy you have leftovers tomorrow, okay? And, uh, you know, that's it. That's all. That's how to cook Hungarian goulash. <laughs> all right? Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. I hope you like the fan page. It's facebook.com slash cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on ifood.tv slash cooking with Kimberly and youtube.com slash cooking with Kimberly. And my site is cookingwithkimberly.com. If you're wondering about this guy, make sure you go check it out at kg2entertainment.com. You can grab a shirt like this, too. This is Joe. Meet Joe. <laughs> All right, everybody. Be a champion in your kitchen and eat deliciously. Bye.